Hey guys, welcome back. back and welcome if you're new if you are new hello my name is Sarah and I make lots of what's for dinner videos and cook with me videos I also make lots of home decor videos and home related content as well as mom related content and a lot of plus size fashion and beauty videos if any of those things strike your fancy I would love it if you subscribed and followed along with us and if you haven't already please follow me on Instagram because I post there <laughs> If you like anything that I do on my channel, you will probably like my Instagram as well. My Instagram is Sarah England, so go ahead and follow if you like. Um, but today's video is going to be another What's for Dinner video. I'm so thankful for all of you that recently joined from my channel. Um, I am just overjoyed with all of you who decided to subscribe and just come on over and it really means the world to me like you have no idea i love seeing your comments and just how kind you guys are all so kind it's insane and it makes me so happy so i hope you guys also enjoy this what's for dinner video and um this week has a lot more fall uh dinner ideas um now let me just say that it is still like 100 degrees outside literally 100 today i think um in texas but that hasn't stopped me from making chili and like tons of crock pot options and for those of you who are either already entering the actual fall weather season or if you are just like me and just want to bring it on, then I am so glad you're here and I hope you enjoy all these recipes. I will always try to make sure I leave the recipe that I use below if I use it from like a, a recipe website or from somebody else's video. I always try to make sure I give credit and link it below. Um, and some of these recipes are also just from my own concoctions. So <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much and let's get started with the dinners. All right, so the first meal we're making is some chili. This is one of my all time favorite meals to make because it just makes you so happy. It warms you through and it is like the best fall meal ever. So all of my stuff is from Walmart, great value. Um, I feel like chili is such an awesome way to stretch a buck as well. So I'm just sauteing up my ground beef and browning it up. You can totally do this in your Instant Pot if you're using that as your slow cooker. I am just trying to kind of Make sure I don't give it as much fat and grease in it, but you do you, whatever you'd like. But once I got that all sauteed up, I just pop that in my Instant Pot with the jar of tomato sauce and then a heaping spoon, spoonful of tomato paste. I then am adding in a little bit of water and this McCormick Slow Cooker's chili seasoning. If you have your own chili seasoning on hand, you do you, you make it how you like it. I just really like that chili seasoning because it's not heavy and cumin. Um, I also add in a good chunk of sugar because I like my chili sweet and a lot of Worcestershire sauce because it's just so acidic and delicious. And then a lot of cayenne because I also like my chili spicy. I do a squirt of ketchup in it and once I just like dabble taste test mix in and add what I need to add kind of just go back and forth and then when I got the sauce the way I like it I then add my beans I took two jars of kidney beans because it's what I had on hand but you can use whatever beans that you like and then I just let it cook away and guys this was probably the best chili I have ever made and the issue is is because I just kind of concoct and add here and take away there and do what I like and so I don't remember the exact recipe <laughs> but it was good and I pretty much do the same thing I just added probably a bit more sugar this time and I loved the way it came out. Next I am making some corn muffins, cornbread muffins um, and I do also add some sugar into this because I like my cornbread sweet as well and these came out delicious and golden and yummy and then we just had that with our chili with a little bit of cheddar cheese on top and my golly this was so good. Once again we use make this all the time in the fall because it is cheap and expensive and it lasts forever. You can also make chili mac out of it, take it for lunch, have it again for dinner. It lasts forever and it freezes really well and it's delicious. Next we are making kind of my version of the Outback Alice Springs chicken. 
and I am taking three um, chicken breasts and then I am just going to season them with some salt and some pepper and some garlic powder and a lot of this garlic wine seasoning that I got from the melting pot um, and then I'm going to take a bottle of honey mustard I love the sweet baby rays honey mustard the recipe I linked does make their own but I use this because it was just really fast and was delicious I covered them all up and it spread the honey mustard out so it got evenly coated on all the chicken breasts and kind of like in the crevices when it baked um, and of course when this bakes it kind of breaks down the honey mustard to a lot thinner of a sauce um, but this was so easy so good like I said you can follow the recipe and make your own honey mustard um, I had all the ingredients but I just wanted this one because it was great but if you don't have this honey mustard it's pretty much really really easy to bake once that is in the oven for about 20 minutes I then cut up these potatoes these potatoes are um, the Kristen step ranch potato recipe that I've made a million times before. I got it from her and they are so good. Guys, if you haven't made them, you need to. They're super easy. I just chop up my um, yellow baby potatoes and then I add in a good amount of olive oil. I then add a ton of garlic because I love garlic, but you can add as little or as much as you would like. And then I take about half of a ranch packet. Um, I think Kristen uses a whole ranch packet. I just like a little bit less ranch so you can still kind of taste the potatoes. I do add a little bit of salt and pepper as well. I mix it together and I pop them on a baking sheet and bake them in the oven and they get really crispy and delicious. Oh my gosh, so good. I then sauteed up a little bit of bacon to go on top of the chicken. I'm also using this extra sharp uh, shredded cheddar cheese and I'm popping that on top so it can get nice and melty and then putting the bacon in as well. And we're gonna pop that back in the oven for like another 10 minutes or so until everything is nicely melted and delicious and bubbly. And this is how everything turned out. The potatoes get really crispy and crunchy and so flavorful and then the chicken was juicy and tender and moist. This was super yummy. I feel like this is a good date night dinner because it's really easy to make and really inexpensive. And then we just had it alongside my favorite salad, which you guys know is like the sweet smart kale or whatever salad. I showed you guys and talked about it all the time. This meal was so yummy and just, I mean, all sometimes my what's for dinners are pretty much hits and some of them are pretty much misses. And I feel like really insecure, like I'm not a bad, a, a good cook for my family and then we'll have weeks like this where I'm like, man, that was good. Um, the next meal I'm going to make is this mac and cheese soup with ham. This is from my David Venable from QVC, Paula QVC cookbook, um, and you can screenshot it if you would like to make it. But basically, I am just taking a ham steak and cutting that up, dicing it up into little chunks. I also boiled um, some shells, medium pasta shells, but for whatever reason, they didn't... I lost that footage. So um, I did boil those first and then kind of let them rest um, in the strainer, and... I'm going to use that same pot that I boil the noodles in and cook everything else so you have a nice one pot easy cleanup meal. So I'm just popping in that uh, cubed ham steak and a little bit of butter to kind of heat it through, brown up a little bit. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and add two cans of the Campbell's, I believe it's cheese soup, it could be nacho cheese, but the cheese soup. Um, I'm adding two cans of that in there as well as a can of crushed tomatoes. Um, and I'm giving that a nice good stir and mix to get mixed together to combine it all and then I'm gonna go ahead and add my chicken stock um, for kind of the soup base and you can add vegetable stock if you'd like or you can use you know take out the ham add more vegetables this once again I love these types of meals because they're so easily customizable but I'm using chicken stock for the re this recipe um, and then I pretty much bring that all about to a boil um, and then I'm going to go ahead and add in my pasta um, now I ended up making the whole box and it didn't call for the box so I ended up using the noodles for my kids for their dinner um, but you mix it all together bring that to a boil and then add in your cheese I used extra sharp cheddar cheese mix it together and let that cheese melt and it thickened up the sauce um, or the soup and it was really really yummy I ended up adding some like spiciness to this because I love spicy food but this was really yummy super comforting really cheap and lasted forever too I mean days and days did we have this so it's a good perfect fall meal as well 
This next recipe is sausage balls. Now I'm using Jimmy Dean hot sausage. I absolutely recommend the hot sausage even if you don't like spicy foods because it doesn't end up being spicy, um, but it, it needs that extra flavor. I then use the cream cheese, a block of cream cheese, some mild shredded cheddar cheese, as well as some bisquick. These are super easy. My mom used to make these as a kid. I'm sure you have made them, or your mom has made them, someone's made them for you. If you haven't, you need to try them because they're great. Um, I'm just taking that hot sausage and then I'm just breaking it up with my fingers. So fun, so delicious. Um, and then I'm just taking that melted block of cream cheese, adding in my cheddar cheese, as well as my bisquick. Of course, I will have this recipe linked below um, and mixing it all together. I used my hands to mix it because I didn't have like the dough um, extra thing that you put on your KitchenAid mixer because um, I have a handheld mixer, but if you have one of those, I recommend it because using my hands was not fun and it took me forever, but I did it and they were great and I would make them again. Um, and then I just round them, uh, rolled them up into about one inch balls on the um, parchment paper and baked them for like 25 minutes or so. These were so good. These were good hot, they were good cold. My family loved them, I loved them. Perfect for football season, um, tailgating, holiday parties coming up, all of that. I love them, totally would make them again. I know this is like a pretty traditional sausage ball, nothing too fancy, but guys, if you haven't had sausage balls in a while, you need to have them again because they were gone by the next day. They were so good and I feel like you can add different fun things and different cheeses and stuff in them to try different things out. Definitely use the hot sausage though. It makes a world of difference. And here is my adorable husband taking a bite, being my taste tester, and offering you a bite because he's so sweet. Let's take a bite again. As you can see, he loved them, and then we packed them up and headed to my family for our Friday night dinners. You love when I include these, and you guys have been so funny and love that I made the Gilmore Girl references. Um, but this is one of my favorite times of the week. We get together and just have a good family night and eat good food and try new recipes and talk and hang out and play games and it is so much fun. So this night we were having lots of fried food, very unhealthy, I know, but it was for Labor Day and we were just celebrating and it was delicious. My mom got an air fryer so she was frying literally everything. So we have fried chicken wings, fried mushrooms, fried cheese sticks. Um, deviled eggs, fruit salad, and we did have some carrots and celery on this side as well, and it was amazing. So good, she's obsessed with the air fryer now. Next, we're making the slow cooker queso chicken tacos. Now, let me tell you that I wasn't sure how this would go, but my husband practically licked the bowl. He ate that night multiple helpings and he ate all of the leftovers. So basically, I am just, once again, using my, uh, uh, instant pot for a slow cooker and I'm just putting some chicken breast in the bottom now I only used two this time because I was trying to test it out to see if they would if it was a hit and we will definitely add more next time I use the Taco Bell fajita seasoning mix it calls for a taco seasoning I just like Taco Bell because it's less cuminy and it's a little bit more mild I am then taking a whole can of Rotel um, in the mild one. Once again, you can use whatever one you'd like. And then I am adding in a can of green chilies. And I'm also adding in some um, chicken broth as well. And we're just gonna kind of mix that in together and create kind of the soup base kind of sauce to go over on top. Um, I added the fajita seasoning on top because that's what it called for, but honestly, I don't think it really matters. You could easily mix it into this pot as well. It's all going to cook together, but you do you. If you wanted to stick more to the chicken, I would add it before. If not, if you don't care, I don't think it matters because you can see it kind of just gets washed away anyway. Um, but then I kind of tried to mix it together and kind of make sure that the chicken was fully covered so it didn't dry out during its cooking. And then once it was done cooking, I just shredded it up. Now this did have a lot of liquid. So I did try to scoop out a majority of it. Um, I wasn't super great about it, but I definitely do recommend scooping some out. I'm then using the Tostitos Salsa Con Queso in the medium flavor, and I'm just pouring probably, probably three-fourths of the jar on top 
Guys, this was so good. I did not think it was going to be as good as it was. Um, you can make your own homemade queso or use a different queso if you prefer. Um, this one tasted bomb with it and we just mixed it together. Um, you could easily add more vegetables into this or add whatever else you would like. Um, I then just took some tortillas, put a good nice couple of helpings on top of them and then we added shredded lettuce. You could add sour cream, you could add olives, you could add, I mean, there's so many different things you could add to it, but these were so good. My husband loved them, and they kept really well the next day. Um, this, These would even be good to like dip for like a good queso dip, to be honest with you. They were really, really good. But next time, I definitely think that I will add more chicken, and I will probably try to add some more vegetables or something else just to add a bit more of a filler and a different like uh, texture to it, but honestly, really, really yummy me and um, we just had it with I added a lot of shredded lettuce on top I barely had I barely could add a little bit of my husband's because he doesn't like vegetables so anyway that is it for this video guys I hope you enjoyed it please don't forget to subscribe and I will see you all in very soon in my next video bye guys